In the last video, we were just getting started talking about the enthalpy of moist air. And one of the first things I want to just remind you is that in the earlier relations for calculating this saturation pressure where I was talking, things had to be in Kelvin for the coefficients I had given. And now I'm going to make it even more difficult by saying that these T's that I just defined, these aren't, I didn't tell you wet bulb or dry bulb quite yet because it depends on your situation, but these T's all have to be in degrees Celsius. And there's a different relation if you are in English units or IP, inch pounds. But what I'm going to do in this video is derive an equation for the absolute humidity ratio based on this equation, which is coming from our thermodynamic wet bulb or adiabatic saturation temperature experiment and these relations for enthalpy, these approximate relations. So what I can do is replace this enthalpy here. That's going to be the enthalpy of the dry air entering. So I have 1.006 and here we are at the dry bulb temperature that we are entering at. And we also need the omega at that condition along with this term here. So we have 2501 plus 1.805 and this is T dry bulb. That was this first term so that let me change colors. We have this next term which was omega sat minus omega times H of the liquid water, which we have is 4.186. And remember, we, we've def made this definition that at the wet bulb temperature, the liquid water that's entering is at that wet bulb temperature. That's just part of the definition. So we have to multiply this T is now the wet bulb temperature. And this all equals the H enthalpy at the saturation condition. So now we got to redo this again. And so let me do that in a third color. So we have 1.006 T, and this is at the wet bulb condition when we were saturated, plus omega sat times 2501 plus 1.805 T wet bulb. Now we are trying to solve this equation for omega, which appears here and here. And I noticed I forgot another bracket right there. So let's begin by collecting all the terms for omega that we want on the left hand side of the equation. So let me start, we'll have an omega and that's going to be multiplied by 2501 plus 1.805 T dry bulb. But we also have this term here. So we have to, we're subtracting out 4.186 T wet bulb. So let me mark off things I've taken care of. We've taken care of that term, that term with that one involved along with that. And now let me move some things over to the other side. Let me do that in black. So I'm going to take this term and subtract it from both sides of the equation. So, and let me put this one first. So we have 1.006 T wet bulb minus 1.006 T dry bulb. And the only other thing we need to move to the other side is this saturation term, which is positive here. So it needs to be negative on the other side. So let me, and we can take out that value itself. So let me do that. So we have minus omega sat, and that whole thing is multiplied by, hope this doesn't confuse you, this omega sat's multiplied by this whole thing, 2501 plus 1.085 T wet bulb. And remember we had a, we got a omega sat times 4.186 T wet bulb. So we have to subtract it on this side, 4.186 T wet bulb. 
and now all we have to do is gather a few more like terms and we are in the home stretch. So let me write this over here. So we have, this will be our final. I'll make this a big fraction. Don't know if I'll need that much room. But let's start with the omega saturation terms. So I have omega saturation and that's going to be multiplied. Now I'm going to inside of here I can take 1.805 T wet bulbs and I can subtract out 4.186 T wet bulbs and we'll keep the 2501 and what we're left is we have 1 something minus 4 something so we're left with 2.381 wet bulbs. That's we're left with that, and we have also we'll we'll just do a subtraction because we'll subtract the larger temperature from the smaller temperature. Dry bulb will always be larger than the wet bulb temperature. So notice we had a subtraction here with this one. So we're actually if we do this, we have this positive, and this will be negative. And then we take this whole thing on this side and we move that to the bottom of the equation. And so now we have 2,501 plus 1.805 T dry bulb minus 4.186 T wet bulb. And again, all of this, this is, obviously this is unitless, but these temperatures are all in degree C. There's an analogous formula for degrees Fahrenheit. And so let me remind you of what we've done. We started with uh, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, and, and total pressure. And we started with the wet bulb temperature, got its corresponding saturation pressure. And with that saturation pressure, we calculated out the absolute humidity ratio, which is related to this state here in our adiabatic saturation experiment. And we had this relation of enthalpies from that from that setup and then we had these relations uh, that are related to temperature for enthalpy because we're assuming everything's an ideal gas and we substituted in those conditions and items into this formula and so now with this term this term and this term along with the dry bulb temperature we can calculate out what the humidity ratio of our moist air sample is from this formula. And so this is something you can plug into a computer program and now we can get absolute humidity ratio. And from there we're going to be traveling on to figuring out the relative humidity, specific volume, the enthalpy of the moist air sample, and partial pressures and dew points. So we've, we've got a little ways to go yet, but it follows fairly straightforward from here. See you in the next video.